Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with a Therapist this wonderful Thursday morning. I am enjoying coffee from my presidential cup, which I always kind of enjoy, like little fun cups or different things that I can drink coffee or tea out of, because sometimes it's the little things in life that really matter, which ties into what I want to talk about today, which is when happiness does not feel good for people and how I see this show up in my clients, how I've seen this show up in my own life and what that means and how we can counteract that. So overall, people have this belief that everybody is seeking happiness and everybody wants to be happy and that is our goal and that is what we are we are aiming to be. However, I've also found that people, especially if they've had a history of trauma, once they have moments of their life where things are going well and when things start to look on the up and up and they're and they're doing good in life and they're achieving their goals, it can actually be incredibly uncomfortable. And usually that's even surprising and kind of frustrating to themselves that it's like, okay, I'm finally in this state of happiness or I finally achieved this goal and why can't I enjoy that, right? Because once they achieve these goals and once they're in a state of like, my life is going well, often, instead of just being able to be in that happiness and really just like, let it be what it is, anxiety starts to pop up. And there's fears around, well, what will happen when the shoe drops? Or when will something bad happen? Or, oh my gosh, I can't trust this happiness because it's definitely not going to stick around, right? Like it's, it's all of a sudden, like it goes from, okay, things are going well to, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? And again, I think it's, it's, that's when we know that the brain still has work to do as far as really healing those pathways that are trusting in the world. And that's not to say that, you know, think bad things won't happen. It's not to say that like, you know, because for all of us, inevitably, we're going to go through hard things. That is for sure. But it's the brain's ability to trust in the moment and be in the moment when we are having periods of happiness or when life is going well and to not feel like we have to be in fear mode of of what will happen next or that we don't have to feel guilty too if we are feeling happy. I know for some people it's like when they're doing well, they can feel guilt like they don't deserve to be happy or, you know, they definitely don't deserve to be happy if others aren't happy. And so there's also this element of guilt that can come up for people. The third way that I see it too is that for those who are really used to living in a state of chronic anxiety, usually they base their life's happiness on achieving goals. So they'll say things like, when I get married, then I'll be happy. And then they get married and they're like, they have that one small hit of dopamine and they're like, oh, that was a really cool event. And then after marriage or right immediately, like about a week or two after, it's like, okay, when we have kids or when I achieve this career goal, then I'll be happy. So I call it like the if then kind of happiness. But really that's that's more anxiety based and that's more goal dependent happiness. That's not about learning how to actually embody and be in the moment of happiness. That's actually just us really playing into this like dopamine cycle of getting a hit of dopamine every time we achieve a goal. And we're not really talking about happiness in that regard. We're talking about getting that hit of dopamine and then being in a state of anxiety and um, stress and cortisol, all those moments in between. So if we're so used to living a life where we're constantly chasing after goals, it's actually very uncomfortable to be happy and to be still and to be just enjoying the moment because we are so used to being in a state of anxiety and being in a state of cortisol that happiness doesn't feel comfortable even though it's a good or typically seen as a good and positive emotion. And so I want to talk about like, so there's these different ways that people can struggle with happiness. They can struggle with happiness because they automatically go into this fear mode of, what's going to happen next that's bad. They can struggle with happiness because they feel a lot of guilt about feeling happy and that they don't really deserve it um, or that they can't embody it when other people are struggling. Or they can really struggle with happiness because they kind of get addicted to being in anxiety mode and stress mode and always achieving mode, right? And so 
I want to talk about ways that we heal this in therapy, right? So for the first part, we have to know, like we have to heal our lens on trauma, right? Which is like a totally different conversation. So that's one part of it. But the other really big part that people miss out on sometimes is that we have to build trust in ourselves to be able to handle the hard things, to be able to handle if something bad does happen. Once we build that trust and we know that we can go through hard things and take care of ourselves and not act out too much and not, you know, blow up our lives or self-destruct in different ways, typically over time, we will learn to trust those moments where things are going well and we'll be able to trust those moments of happiness because we know that, okay, right now I'm in this moment of happiness and I don't have to be overly concerned or on alert for the bad stuff to happen because I trust that I can do hard things. And I've seen how I've been able to do that in the past. So it's almost more of a trust building thing in ourselves and inevitably in life that ultimately good will come of life, right? And that can get kind of spiritual or existential. Um, And I think whatever way is healing for you is good. The other thing is also understanding that when we are in a state of happiness for the guilt part, we It does not negate or help other people for us to also be in a place of struggle or pain. And in fact, when we're doing well in life, we are more well equipped to give and to help and to be empathetic with other people. And so it doesn't help other people that are struggling for us to constantly be in the same state that they are. So I think it's really important for those who feel this like natural tendency of guilt to realize that ultimately their intention of helping other people out is only going to come to fruition if they're able to really allow themselves to have good in their life and to fill their own cup, so to speak. The third thing is for those who are addicted to that dopamine cycle of just achieving and like they get that hit of dopamine, they're like, okay, that was awesome. And then it quickly dissipates. Um, And that's kind of how they perceive their life's happiness. It is so important that they find different ways to be grounded. And and why I say grounded is because they're really working towards building up their what we call their serotonin pathways. And so the serotonin cycle is when we're really able to enjoy the moment and be exactly where we are and be good enough exactly as we are in this present moment. And for a healthy, productive life and a meaningful life, we have to have good balance in both areas, right? If we get too far into the serotonin pathway, we might get a little bit like slothy and like complacent and then maybe not build purpose into our lives. But if we're too heavy in the dopamine pathway, we are just going to live a chronically anxious, stressed out life where we're just go, go, going and never really absorbing what's happening around us. So if you're a person that has that like ideology in your head that like, when I do this, then I'll be happy, I would highly recommend that you work on practicing mindfulness and being grounded in the moment. And and that's going to look different for different people. Like whatever resonates with you, whether it's yoga, breathing exercises, mindful walks, you know, whatever really connects you to being in the moment and truly just letting yourself be where you are with acceptance and non-judgment is huge, right? And being able to, to make sure that you rebalance those different cycles in your life so you're not overly in that chronic state of stress and anxiety, which most Americans are. I'm just going to be real. Culturally, we really push that dopamine cycle and we really undervalue and don't build in practices for the serotonin cycle of life. And so I would highly encourage most people that are (laughs) listening to this that that's probably one of the areas that you're going to have to work on. I know even in my own life, like that's one of the areas that I tend to not like build in naturally. Like I have to be very intentional about it because I could totally just go, go, go and not build in those very important practices of like grounding, being in the moment, or even if this is the way to connect you, gratitude. So gratitude is another way of grounding because it helps us appreciate where we are and what we have now instead of looking at where we're, you know, missing and where we're going and all the things we don't have, right? So gratitude and grounding practices are going to be incredibly helpful for you. 
All right, y'all. I am so grateful to be connected with you, and I hope you're able to go out in life and enjoy those moments and periods of happiness and the good that is going on in your life. I'd love your feedback, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a wonderful Thursday.